good afternoon everyone welcome to our new academy um, where you can crack all need pg exams with us with our top educator great learning experience so guys let's crack uh, need pg together a little about me i am dr sasha menin remedius i've done my mbbs from father mulla medical college and my md from md in anesthesiology from father mulla medical college mangalo i have been uh, I have two publications and one paper presentation in the field of anesthesia and I've been working and teaching in Bangalore for the past two and a half years. Uh, so today we'll complete, uh, we'll be taking the remaining of the topic of vaporizer. Uh, yesterday we did some, we did the classification and, and the pumping effect. So today we'll... Uh, So basically what you okay so we have our then uh, all the courses are structured they are in line now uh, all these are structured courses and they are in line with your exam syllabus that is whatever is best for you all uh, from the exam point of view the educators have prepared your topics based on that so from the exam point of view whatever is needed for you all based on that your course structure has been furnished then we have our live tests and quizzes so we conduct regular live tests and quizzes and this will help you all to evaluate your performance on a daily on a regular basis so that you all know where you all will stand you all stand then there's unlimited access so it's one time subscription that can get you access to all our live courses and you can watch from the comfort of any of your device so wherever you are uh, wherever you are whether you're at home or whether you're traveling from the comfort of your home you all can uh, watch um, you all can uh, watch from the comfort of any of your devices there are some of our top educators on the platform dr nikita nanwani dr Mok Dr. Mishra, Dr. Sharma. Dr. Nikita Nanwani is a neat PG mentor for radiology as well as maths and concepts focusing on maths numerics, uh, encompassing all subjects. Now, Dr. Nikita Nanwani, uh, she's uh, she's very well known, and for those of you who mnemonics works, this is a really good way to get through uh, your studies. But mnemonics is not for everyone. It doesn't work for everyone. It didn't work for me. But for those of you who mnemonics works, this is a great way, I would say, to go about it. Then Dr. Mohammed, uh, yeah. These are the courses. So these are the various subjects that you all have to cover under the There is quite a bit that you all have to cover. I know it's not easy, but we are here to that. And As you all can see, uh, it, there is quite a bit to, that you all might have to cover. So, so there are various courses under there are various courses under each there are various courses under each topic. So uh, there, there is your course on. Uh, so basically your subjects like anesthesia, psychiatry, 
radiology, pharmacology, and all that. These are these are topics which uh, we're not you didn't have to go into very much detail during your MBBS, right? Even over here, you don't go into uh, that much detail. These are awarded eleven marks each, but that does not mean that these eleven marks are easy to score. You have to go through the subject. A matter from the neat PG point of view to be able to score those 11 marks. Those 11 marks are still easy to score. Like our neat P in uh, undergrad, you all didn't have to go into detail. Even here in neat PG, you don't have to go into that much detail. But the questions that they will ask will be in some detail, and you have to go through the exam material for that. Then uh, your your subjects such as uh, physiology and Subjects such as physiology, anatomy, pharmacology, these were uh, topics that you all have done for like maybe quite a while. Like you all have done these topics for uh, a year in MBBS. So they will ask you quite a bit in these topics. They can ask you any, anywhere. And these topics are loaded around 44 marks each. In these topics, they can ask you anything from Then these are some of the ongoing courses on our platform. As you can see, course on neurophysiology, um, GI surgery, cardiovascular thoracic surgery, uh, capsule on the larynx, uh, capsule on the larynx, uh, respiratory system, pathology, etc. Then, as you can now, as you can see on the screen, all types of subjects. For those of you who, uh, for those of you who, who uh, are giving me PG this year, the six six month subscription should suffice. The rest of you, I would recommend the twelve and the twenty four month subscription. These are really good subscriptions. The twelve and twenty four month are basically. Uh, more economical because uh, after six months you will have to pay again you will have to uh, spend money again with the six month subscription but that is with your 12 and 24 months that is not the case you don't have to make the payment again it is a you have the buffer time so it is more economical for you then for the 12 and 24 basically uh, um, it gives you time right to choose what you want actually you're going through all subjects so even though what you might have decided on while studying other subjects you might realize that you don't want what you have actually decided on you might want something else so it's quite diverse and it varies a lot so there is from subject to subject and from your interest etc so it can actually help you decide so this is your 12 and 24 month day so you can use my code SASHA at the bottom to avail a 10% discount. So the 10% discount is applicable on all five types of uh, subscriptions. Now as you can see the 24 month too, nobody is going to ask you how long you took to clear your exam etc. You can get, uh, nobody will ask such questions at the end of the day. It is all, uh, it is all how, it is all about practice and how you make your mark in how you may eat your mark, nobody is going to ask you how long you took to clear any exam and all that. Such questions asked. So take your time. There is no harm. So use my code and avail your 10 percent discount. So it's actually this is where we will pick up from for today so we stopped here yesterday the classification of vaporizers 
So it is based on the method, method of regulating output variable bypass measured flow. Uh, then based on the method of vaporization, that is your flow over. Based on the method of uh, vaporization, that is your. So it is being classified into uh, it is uh, classified uh, basically based on the method of regulating output, method of vaporization, uh, location, temperature compensation, agent specificity, etc. In the variable bypass, there is an out inlet and an outlet. It has an inlet. Fresh gas flows through the bypass chamber and the vaporizing chamber. Concentration of anesthetic delivers depend upon the amount of fresh gas flowing through the vaporizing So it accepts the total uh, gas flow from the anesthesia ma machine and it uh, delivers the gas flow with a predictable concentration of vapor to the gas, common gas outlet okay so it uh, the carrier gas flow entering the vaporizer is divided into two parts one is bypass chain uh, and the other going through the vaporizing chamber then we have the measured flow vaporizer so in the measured flow uh, vaporizer, it's of three parts. It has okay. So what happens over here is a measured amount of carrier gas. So a measured amount of uh, uh, carrier gas goes through uh, flows to a flow meter and uh, onto the vaporizer circuit control valve, which directs it to the vaporizer. So it flows uh, through a flow meter, then through a vaporizer circuit control valve that directs it uh, to the vaporizer. The gas saturated with vapor is returned to the vaporizer circuit control valve, where it is diluted by the remaining fresh gas flow and goes to the patient. Right. So, okay, so this is the main flow meter. So um, the from the main flow meter, this uh, mixture uh, first is passed. Through a, is passed through a vaporizer control circuit control valve which sends particular amount to the vaporizer it is bubbled through basically vaporizing chamber it gets the the gas the carry gas gets saturated with the vaporizing liquid and then it is mixed with the gas with the patient it is primitive the vaporizer heats the anesthetic agent uh, to the temperature above the boiling point this is then uh, metered into the Fresh gas flow. A measured flow of oxygen is allowed to pass through the vaporizing chamber. So the vaporizer heats the anesthetic agent to a temperature above the boiling point in order to dilute this little concentration of anesthetic coming out of the measured flow. It is combined with gases passing from the main flow meter. Uh, the, the problem with the measured flow vaporizer is the operator has to set the flow to the vaporizer and bypass with separate flow meter. So you have the operator has to set the flow going to the vaporizer and the uh, bypass. Uh, this means that respective flows have to be calculated for each agent at a given temperature and vapor output. To calculate the vaporizer output, one must know the vapor pressure of the agent, atmospheric pressure, total flow of gases and the flow of the vaporizer. Then the method based on the method of vaporization, vapor, the, uh, vaporizers are classified as flow over bubble through an injector. Flow over the carrier gas is simply passed over the liquid anesthetic agent uh, due to capillary pathway over the liquid. This again baffles and spiral gas also increases the surface area. Okay, so this increases the vaporization also. Then we have the flow over method. So the 
the gas is uh, uh, the, ga the carrier gas is allowed to bubble through the liquid. Smaller the bubble, larger will be the surface area. Method uh, to break the gas into small bubbles are agitation and splashing, right? Factors in place, so over here that fact is size of the bubble, depth of carrier gas flow. The size of the bubble is basically smaller the bubbles, more the surface area available for will let small the bubble. Small bubbles, more surface area is uh, available for equilibration. For example, in copper kettle, a sintered bronze plate is used to break the gas flow into small bubbles to increase efficiency of vaporization. Depth of liquid, deeper the liquid. The deeper the liquid, the more is the time required to bubble, uh, more is the time required for bubble to reach the surface, allowing more time for equilibration, right? Uh, for example, in the bottle, the pressing the plunger below the level of the liquid increases vaporization. So, smaller the bubble, uh, more is the surface area uh, available for equilibration, deeper the liquid, more time for the, for the gas to reach the surface and hence more time for equilibration. And velocity of carry glass, the flask, faster the flow of bubbles, the less is the time available. So it will be slower for so more time for equilibration. So this is bubble, uh, this is the uh, uh, bubble through, where the fresh gas flow is bubble through a center material. Example is uh, bubble through is used in copper kettle. Injection vaporizers, so a known amount of liquid agent of pure vapor is injected into the gas stream to provide the desired concentration. Like seen in your Dex, uh, Tex 6 Desk Fluorine Vaporizer JYD. Now, vaporize, uh, location of the vaporizer, it can be uh, out of circuit or in circuit vaporizer. Now, out of uh, system vaporizer, uh, all measured flow vaporizers are located out of the breathing system. So, all contemporary vaporizers are used for Used outside the circuit as they are of a high resistance to gas flow. So they are used outside. Even your the measured flow vaporizer. Yeah. So measured flow vaporizers are located out of the breathing system and have a dedicated flow meter. Salem vaporizers, high resistance are also used out of the system. These may be attached. These may be attached. Uh, so this is a Salem vaporizer. X6 vaporizers are Salem vaporizers. These two are high resistance uh, vaporizers and they are used out of system. So they may be attached uh, between the flow meter and the common gas outlet. Uh, here the advantage is the vaporizer is securely mounted on the machine. Or they may be located between the common gas outlet and the breathing system, right? So between the flow meter and the common gas outlet, this is where they are usually located, or between the common gas outlet and the breathing system. So in system vaporizers, uh, in system vaporizers are those in which so all in system vaporizers are uh, if situated within the circle should have a negligible negligible resistance right so this is your goldman vaporizer basically so uh, it is a vaporizer in which the patient's inspiratory and expiratory gas the patient expires gas to the vaporizer so the inspiratory and ex expiratory gas both go to the vaporizer uh, they can be used in the circuit system either in the inspiratory or expiratory limb uh, as inhalers the air they can be used as inhalers where the air is drawn to the vaporizer by the patient's respiration and facilitates for supplementing oxygen and assisting ventilation. Facilities for supplementing of oxygen and ventilation may be provided. Salem vaporizers cannot be used as in system vaporizers because they offer resistance and they cannot be used as inhalers. Okay. So the expired gas passes through the vaporizer, the concentration of volatile agents will be increased by repeated. Uh, passage of gases through the vaporizer. These vaporizers are inherently inefficient.
So temperature compensation, temperature compensation to maintain a constant output from the vaporizer method. So from the vaporizer, mechanisms to compensate for fluctuation in temperature has to be employed. So there, there will be an alteration in the splitting ratio, that is the automatic compensation. So there will be alterations in the uh, So a bimetallic strip in tech vaporizers. So the in tech vaporizers there's a bimetallic strip uh, and either either fill bellows in pendant vaporizer is uh, ether fill bellows in pendant vaporizer. So so it can be either automatic uh, compensation that is some alteration in splitting ratio or it can be based on the uh, compound control that is electronic vaporizers like your allergy. A supply heat like your tech 6 that is your desk fluorine vaporizer. So basically the bimetallic strip is a tech vaporizer. It is a thermostat uh, which controls the, it is an automatic compensation which causes an alteration in the splitting ratio. So the thermal compensation is based on the fact that uh, bimetallic strip thermal compensation uh, in a bimetallic strip two metals with very different thermal expansion coefficients are fixed together. When the temperature increases, the bimetallic strip bends in such a way that it closes the valve because both the materials expand so, so as to decrease the fresh gas flow. When temperature decreases, it bends to open the valve to allow more fresh gas flow. Okay, so any decrease in uh, temperature, it will open the valve to allow more fresh gas flow. And any increase in temperature, it decreases the fresh gas flow. Then we have the resistance offered by the vaporizer in a circuit. High resistance are your plenum and tech vaporizers. Low resistance are your draw over vaporizers. Now, plenum vaporizers with high resistance which de depend on compressed gas driven under pressure. These are basically your tech vaporizers, copper kettle, boil bottle, pendant vaporizers, laser vaporizers. Plenum draw over that is your low resistance vaporizer. The carrier gas is drawn through the vaporizer either by the patient's own respiratory effort or by a self inflating, inflating bag or manual bellows. Now factors affecting vaporizer output. So the factors that affect the vaporizer output are the flow through the vaporizing chamber, varying the uh, proportion of carrier gas passing through the vaporizing chamber and bypass chamber, uh, surface area of the liquid uh, gas interface, the rate of the surface area more will be the vaporization, that is more vaporization will bubble through than flow over. Uh, temperature as temperature increases, output also will increase. Uh, time so output concentration tends to fall over time gas flow rate at high flow rates the gas leaving the vaporizing chamber is less saturated so at high flow rate the gas leaving the vaporizing chamber is less saturated carrier gas compensation changes in viscosity and density may affect the proportion of total flow passing through the rising chamber so nitrous oxide dissolved in the flow alters the effective volume passing through the vaporizing chamber. Boiling point, higher the boiling point, lesser will be the vaporizing output. Uh, and in pressure, saturated temperature, so if pressure is reduced, there will be earlier uh, the output is increased. Agents with low boiling point are more susceptible to influence of ambient pressure. So now coming to back pressure. Back pressure, we have two effects, pumping effect and pressurizing effect. We dealt with the pumping effect yesterday, but we'll go through it and then we will do the pressurizing effect. So during general anesthesia, with the employment of positive pressure ventilation, given manually or by the by automatic ventilation, certain back pressure is reduced. As the pressure in the breathing system increases, it is transmitted back to the vaporizer, compressing the gas inside the vaporizer, especially in the at the bypass 
So when the when the bag is squeezed during intermittent positive pressure ventilation, pressure in the breathing system increases. This pressure is transmitted back into the bypass as well as the vaporizing chamber. So this pressure is transmitted back into the bypass as well as the vaporizing chamber. The fresh gas tries to move forward and gets compressed. So the fresh gas gets compressed both in the bypass chamber and the vaporizing chamber. When the positive pressure is suddenly released, uh, the previously compressed gas now suddenly expands in all directions. Some of the rapidly expanding gas. So now there is a the positive pressure is suddenly released, and over here, whatever gas the previously compressed gas, the pressure falls first in the bypass chamber more than the vaporizing chamber because the bypass chamber is slightly bigger and the pressure drop is more here. So the gas suddenly expands in all direction and since there is a more pressure drop in the bypass chamber there is more gas en entering into the uh, there is gas containing vapor vaporized gas will enter into the bypass channel. So when the patient gets uh, the, the, so the final output will be containing both the Bypass chamber gas will also contain vapor, vapor, uh, vapor I mean the, uh, the inhalation agent as well as from the vaporizing chamber there will be inhalation agent, there will be uh, increased output, right. So the pumping effect increases the delivered concentration of anesthetic agents. So normally a vaporizer, the bypass channel does not have vapor, right. So this vapor due to the pumping effect is additional. So when this bypass vapor flows through the exit, it meets the vapor from the vaporizing chamber. The addition of the bypass vapor to the vapor from the vaporizing chamber raises the final concentration of the anesthetic deliver, which is the pumping effect. This increases the delivered concentration of the anesthetic agent. So some of the corrective measures that have been employed to correct this pumping effect are Increase the size of the variable bypass chamber. Uh, uh, decreasing the volume, I'm sorry, decreasing the volume of the vaporizing chamber. Uh, adding an increased resistance at both the bypass as well as the vaporizing chamber. Adding a long spiral tube before gas can reach the vaporizing chamber leading to bypass, thus preventing the gas from packing back. And applying a one way valve. So these are some of the modifications that could be uh, done to reduce this pumping effect. Now the pressurizing effect. So pressurizing effect occurs when the carrier gas is compressed in the vaporizing chamber. However, since the number of molecules of vapor in the vaporizing chamber does not increase, the carrier gas cannot pick up additional molecules of vapor. Thus, this results in dilution of anesthetic in the vaporizing chamber and a decrease in output. So, as opposed to this, so during again, this is again during uh, during IPPV, during uh, intermittent positive pressure ventilation. In some vap vaporizers, output decreases than what has been set. This is called the pressurizing effect. The factors that are responsible uh, are opposite to that in the pumping effect. So high flows but low dial. So when there are high flows of the carrier gas but lower dial settings and frequent pressure changes will lead to this pressurizing effect. So as extra pressure at the outlet is applied, the pressure inside vaporizing chamber increases. However, the increased carrier gas pressure will not carry any additional vapor molecule. So the final concentration is mainly dependent on the saturated vapor pressure of the anesthetic rather than total pressure inside the chamber. So as a result, dilution takes place leading to decreased final concentration. So this pressurizing effect is more at high gas flows. Um, The changes in the vaporizer output are more with the uh, pumping effect and are of greater clinical significance.
Other factors that affect performance are so uh, the level of liquid anesthetic. So in both pumping as well as pressurizing effects, lower level of anesthetic is one of the causes of the pumping and pressurizing effect. If too much of is filled in the chamber, then area available for contact will be decreased if it is too full. Now spilling of the liquid into the bypass can actually increase the output to dangerously high levels. So, so overfilling, so spilling into the bypass can increase the output if there is any spilling occurring. So overfilling now uh, basically the liquid agent can enter the fresh gas line in, uh, leading to high concentration. If the wicks are completely submerged, the surface area for vaporization is decreased. So overfilling, the surface area for vaporization will be decreased. Um, basically this overfilling, the uh, surface, the wicks will be emerged. So the surface area for vaporization will decrease, which uh, leads to a fall in the vaporizer output. So this can be prevented by low level filling and so fill it only till that much. Uh, use of agent specific filling devices and filling only up to the level indicated. Then uh, stabilizers with like thymol, they are known to decrease the available surface area and also interfere with the intricate mechanism. Uh, intricate mechanisms of the vaporizer. Then mounting of the vaporizer, if the vaporizer is tilted or not exactly straight. So if the vaporizer is tilted or not exactly straight, it can increase the output. So uh, tipping, this can lead to, so tipping is also known as So it is known as tipping. So in uh, tipping, uh, the entry of liquid agent into the uh, bypass chamber. So the liquid agent can enter into the bypass chamber and uh, dangerously high concentrations of vapor will then be when will then be de uh, delivered uh, when the vaporizer is turned on so in free standing vaporizers liquid agent can directly enter the breathing circuit and the patient's lungs this can be prevented by so a vaporizer should be uh, mounting vaporizer in the main fold draining the vaporizers before being moved Newer vaporizers like Tecfo are designed to avoid spillage with the baffle system even when turned 180 degree. The Tec 6 vaporizer for desflurane goes into standby mode if it is tilted more than 10 degree. So the desflurane is tilted more than 10 degrees. So the newer vaporizers have built in safety mechanisms. Uh, so the desflurane vaporizer even when tilted more than 180, uh, more than 10 degrees. Um, it goes into standby mode. So if tipping is suspected, the vaporizer should be flushed with high gas flow for 10 to 15 minutes before it is being used otherwise a uh, high concentration can be delivered to the patient so overfilling also can deliver a high concentration and tipping also can deliver a high concentration then uh, the other factors that can cause hazards are and affect the performance are incorrect uh, concentrations can be delivered uh, because of uh, high concentration of the liquid anesthetic in the delivery tube pumping effect reversed flow agitation low concentrations might get delivered because of decreased temperature the pressurizing effect the wicks may be totally submerged or uh, very low flows or very high flows then uh, 
incorrect agent use to the wrong use of the agent in the vaporizer can lead to a dangerously high concentration of the anesthetic agent delivered. This is minimized basically the vaporizers are color coded and the agent monitors are used on the screen which indicate which vaporizer is being used and even the filling devices are very agent specific. So with the there is something known as reversal of flow. So with the reversal of flow uh, through the vaporizer output is increased. This is prevented by mounting the vaporizer on the main fold. And in freestanding vaporizers, use of arrow to indicate direction of flow. So basically, the safety features. So the ideal vaporizer, an ideal vaporizer should uh, deliver a fixed desired concentration that is equal to concentration on the dial setting should be independent of temperature flow rate and carrier gas so it should be independent of temperature flow rate and carrier gas there should be no effect of black back pressure easy to maintain and clean and agent specific So, there should be no effect of back pressure, easy to maintain and clean the device at agent specific. So, this would be an ideal vaporizer. Now, the ASTM standards of vaporizer. So, uh, the vaporizer must uh, be capable of accepting 15 liters per minute fresh gas flow and deliver predictable vapor concentrations. Uh, there should be a well explained user manual. Uh, influence of uh, temperature bar inflow rates to be stated there must be a system to isolate vaporizers from each other uh, control controls to limit escape of vapor from the chamber so less than 0.1 percent is delivered in off knobs to turn counterclockwise to increase the concentration and must have liquid level indicator visible from the front it cannot be over filled so basically uh, must allow calibrated flow of oxygen nitrous in on and off and not discharge liquid through outlet when mounted. Uh, if unsuitable for use in breathing system, inlet to be male, outlet to be female, direction of flow is to be marked. If suitable for use in breathing system, inlet to be female, outlet male and direction to be marked. The safety features of a vaporizer, the important safety features, this is important. So in a vaporizer, the important safety features are color specific for each agent. Okay? So basically see isofluorine is purple, sevofluorine is yellow, halothane is red, and fluorine is orange, the desfluorine des is blue. Okay? So uh, agent specific filling system. So prevent accidental filling with the wrong agent. Uh, the fillers, the key, these are keyed filler bottles that will fit only into the, so the, the key, these are the keyed filler bottles, it will fit only into the vaporizer for which it is designed. So this is an isofluorine, it will only fit into the key of the isofluorine vaporizer. Uh, so this is also done to reduce air pollution during filling and prevent water and contaminants from entering the vaporizing chamber. So it consists of color coded bottles and a matching color coded adapter. So these are color coded bottles and this is a matching adapter which will fit into the vaporizing filling, vaporizer filling receptacle. Low filling port, this minimizes overfilling because the filler port is located at a maximum safe. So the filler port is located at a maximum safe liquid level. Uh, secured vaporizers less ability to move them about so uh, these are mounted pre-mounted so interlock so less so no less uh, uh, less amount of tilting uh, happening so less ability to move them about minimizes tipping only one vaporizer can be turned down at a time because of the interlock system 
So gas enters only the one which is on. Trace vapor output is minimized when the vaporizer is off. Vaporizers are locked into the gas circuit when they are on and thus they and thus ensuring they are seated correctly. It will not turn on if it is not seated correctly or mounted correctly. Concentration dial increases output in all when rotated clockwise. So these are the safety features that are incorporated into the vaporizer. Now the hazards are we just went through them. Again we will go through them in brief. Tipping. So if tipped more than 45 degree uh, liquid can so when the vaporizer is tipped more than 45 degree the liquid can uh, obstruct the outlet valve. So treatment is basically you have to flush uh, So you have to basically flush for 20 to 30 minutes at a high flow rate with the dial set at a very high concentration. Overfilling may result in a very high output. So fill only up to the max filling line. Fill only when the vaporizer is off. So only when the vaporizer is off filling has to be done. Leaks relative it is common due to malposition or a loose filler cap. Misfilling, vaporizers not equipped with the key filling can lead to uh, misfilling, the wrong vaporizer being filled. Contamination, it occurs by filling a vaporizer with contaminated uh, anesthetic uh, bottle. Underfilling, it leads to decreased vaporizer output. And simultaneous inhaled anesthetic administration happened in old machines with no interlock system. So in those, there was increased output. Now coming to the history and evolution of uh, vaporizers. So, in 1845, Horace, Horace Wells discovered nitrous oxide, 1846, William Morton discovered ether, 1847, uh, Simpson discovered the chloroform, 1853, John Snow used chloroform, 1878 was ED tube, 1884 was cocaine, 1895 to 98 was final anesthesia was discovered. So, how was it like before 1845? So, uh, this is um brief this is not required so so in 1845 uh, Quincy Colton an American showman performed a show using nitrous oxide and laughing gas which utilizes psychotic potentials of uh, nitrous oxide so basically he performed the American show uh, he administered it to all the audience who desired to inhale it and uh, men were invited to produce those who had inhaled it from under the from hurting themselves and uh, so the effect was to make those who had inhaled it either laugh sing dance or speak or fight right so it was basically a but they all retained consciousness uh, enough to not to say or do that which they would have an occasion to regret. So he started nitrous oxide for tooth extraction by Dr. Horace Wells. This was WTG Morton made history by being first in the world to publicly and successfully successfully demonstrate the use of ether anesthesia for surgeries basically a cloth was kept on top to the ether mask in in the ether mask uh, it was a layer of uh, a layer of it was like a mesh like mask and uh, filter paper like a filter like cloth was there and the, that filter cloth had to be go it was wet constantly with ether and the patient can go under so John Snow was one of the first physicians to study and calculate the dosages for the use of ether and also chloroform 
as surgical anesthesia. He personally administered chloroform to Queen Victoria when she gave birth to the last two of her nine children, Leopold and Beatrice. This led to a wider public acceptance of obstetric anesthesia. Snow published an article on ether in 1847 entitled On the Inhalation of Vapor of Ether. A longer work was published uh, posthumously in 1858 entitled On Chloroform and Other Anesthetics and Their Action and Administration. So, uh, so, this was John Snow's ether inhaler. So, now coming to the Oxford. Uh, your Oxford Miniature Vaporizer. So this is designed basically for less volatile anesthetic agents. So basically it was designed for less volatile anesthetic agents uh, such as uh, so less volatile than ether such as halothane, methoxyfluorine, trichloroethylene. So in particular, it is meant as an induction unit for use with the uh, uh, for use with the uh, Epstein and Macintosh uh, inhaler. So it is uh, used for use with that. Uh, So it should never be fitted to the inlet. So this vaporizer is basically fitted into the EMO. It is fitted into the Epstein. Uh, the Epstein and Macintosh discovered the EMO inhaler. So it is basically used for that. So the EMO is basically a variable bypass. Concentration calibrated, draw flow over, agent specific, temperature compensated by supplied heat and altered flow. And vaporizer in and out of system. Okay, so it can be in or out of system vaporizer. So this uh, Oxford Miniature Vaporizer, uh, it should never be fitted to the inlet of the EMO. Otherwise, uh, halothane will be drawn in causing corrosion. It can be used with continuous gas flow for supplementation of relaxant anesthesia. Okay, uh, It is 13.5 centimeter high. So 13.5 centimeter high and weighs 1000 grams. There is a scale which gives volumetric percentage, which gives volumetric percentage at 25 degrees Celsius with small deviations from the indicated concentrations in time and temperature. Okay, it has a special filler that is designed to limit the volume of anesthetic used. It is useful economy device operated by a lever which must be pressed down fully to open the filling port. So it was designed as a simple portable and effective ether vaporizer known as Oxford inhaler. These were manufactured in thousands and were used throughout the world but many disadvantages were like there was no temperature compensation and it had a small reservoir which was only 60 cc. So those were the disadvantages of this vaporizer. Now the copper kettle So the copper kettle is classified as a measured flow. It is classified as measured flow. Bubble through. Out of system. Temperature compensated. By supplied heat and manual flow alteration and multiple agents. So this is a multiple agent that means many agents can be any it's not agent specific. So multiple agents right. So it is basically measured flow bubble through 
uh, out of system device uh, that is temperature compensated by uh, automatic uh, it is uh, temperature compensated by supplied heat and manual flow alteration so d e morris introduced the copper kettle vaporizer it was it introduced a significant improvement in anesthesia and machine uh, design so uh, and performance so for the first time the anesthesiologist uh, could actually precisely control the concentration of volatile anesthetics it was used right up till 2011 so it could uh, control volatile anesthetics administered to the patient however the calculation hazards that the calculation was needed to determine the flow of the gas needed through the vaporizer erroneous calculations could lead to lethal doses failure to turn turn on the main gas flow can re could result in uh, undiluted vapor delivery to the patient uh, overfilling could result because th these vaporizers were filled from the top and spillage also resulted uh, there was quite a lot of spillage too this was eliminated with the newer model of vaporizers so this was the copper kettle Now coming to the boils bottle, it is a variable bypass. The boils bottle, the boils bottle was a variable bypass. Flow over. or bubble through bubble through no temperature compensation okay there's something wrong with this so there was no temperature compensation and agents used could be ether, methoxyfluorine, triline, chloroform, halothane, right? So with the lever in the off position, so it had a rotatory valve, a cowl, a cock washer, control lever and bypass. So with the control lever in off position, the gas flows through the bypass chamber entirely. As the lever is turned towards the on position, an increased proportion of gas is passed through the bottle and uh, in full on all the gases pass through the bottle when the cowl is up gas flows directly from the u-tube to the outlet of the vaporizer uh, gas may be diverted gas may be diverted by lowering the cowl over the end of the so the gas can be diverted so if the cowl is in the up position gas flows directly from the u-tube to the outlet of the vaporizer however when the cowl is uh, lowered over the end of the u-tube gas may be diverted and forced uh, and gases are forced to impinge on the surface of ether okay if the cowl was fully down then the gas bubbled up through the liquid to produce maximum vaporization so maximum vaporization occurred with the cowl in the fully down position the position of the cowl is adjusted by a plunger which passes through a gland to maintain a gas tight seal. The control drum rotates inside the body of the vaporizer. So the control drum rotates inside the body of the vaporizer. So as gases and vapors pass through the vaporizer, the grease tends to be slowly washed away. So copper in these bottles acts as an anti-catalyst preventing decomposition of ether. 
hence boiled bottle it has a copper some bo some bottles are brown or green to prevent decomposition by light and two bottles broad one for ether and narrow one is used for other agents so there are two types of bottles that can be fit a broad one for ether and narrow one for uh, other agents copper is put uh, is in the ether bottle to acts as a anti catalyst preventing decomposition of ether and some bottles are covered colored brown or green to prevent decomposition by light then coming to your goldman vaporizer it is small cheap simple to use light weight and portable the disadvantages is there is no temperature compensation difficult to measure the output and the risk of spilling so these were the older vaporizers tomorrow we'll deal with some of the newer the tech series of vaporizers what is basically in use right now so this we will end here today we discuss briefly the boiled bottle is what is important that's why i gave a little more brief i'll revise this with you tomorrow and if i have time we'll tell you all a little more about it but the tech vaporizers we will have to go in detail so we'll start with the tech vaporizers first tomorrow so do use my code to subscribe sashj to avail your 10 percent discount Thank you guys, have a good day.